Welcome into Hitting Hard with John Chuckery here on Locked On Sports Atlanta. Today on the show, if the Hawks do nothing at the deadline, how upset will you be? No thanks to the other quarterbacks that are in the free agent pool and will celebrate the legacy of LeBron James. It's all next. It's Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked On Sports Atlanta. This is Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Hit and Hard is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com today to get started. We ask you to head to YouTube.com, go Locked On Sports Landing into your search browser. When you get there, hit that subscribe button as we climb towards 6,000 subscribers. Be a part of the community. Leave us a comment. We are free and available to download on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever's your favorite, you can download us for free there. Roku and Amazon Fire, yes, we are actually available on those platforms as well. And then give me a follow on my personal Twitter page, at JMCH316. So as we are, oh gosh, you know, uh, I don't know, a little bit more than 24 hours away from the trade deadline. Here's the question for you. How upset... Will you be if the Hawks do nothing at the trade deadline? And, you know, I I get all of these mixed messages and signals, okay? You know, oh, well, Jarvis Landry is going to be really active at the deadline. Um, uh, Or, sorry, not uh, 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 the the GM. Um, I I got all confused now. But, but. Our GM is going to be active at the deadline and, and Landry Fields, excuse me. Um, our GM is going to be active at the deadline. Well, then he's not going to be active. Okay. Then, well, John Collins is going to get traded. I've heard that from a couple people. Then it's, well, GMs aren't picking up the phone because uh, of the $75 million that's still owed to him. Well, Bogey's going to move. Well, then it's, you know, Bogey's going to move in the summertime if he picks up. There's all of these mixed messages. So, Here's what the reality is, okay? Whether they want to move Collins or don't want to move Collins, whether they want to move Bogey, don't move Bogey, whether they're going to be active and all active, this may be above Landry Field's pay grade or what's Tony Ressler's son's name, Nick Ressler. This may be all above their pay grade, first off. This may be a situation where Tony Ressler either wants to get in the luxury tax or he doesn't want to get in the luxury tax. Now, they're going to go in the luxury tax next year, even if they just kind of hold serve, right? Let's just say that you keep everybody in place. And even if you deal bogey over the summertime, they're going to go into the luxury tax. DeAndre Hunter is going to go from $9.9 million up to $21 million. John Collins' salary goes up. Trey Young's salary goes up, right? Everybody's salary is going to go up. And yes, the cap will go up, but the cap is not going to outrun what the Hawks' salaries are. And so this may be a situation where Tony Ressler is going to be the ultimate decider on what they do. Now, the Hawks lost last night. Okay, I mean, we'll talk about that in just a second here. But it, I will say that they did what they had to do on the road trip. Would I have liked to have been greedy last night? Yes. But you look at, they did what they had to do on the road trip at two and three with this five game set out West, you know, playing the non-California Western conference teams, right? You know, they did what they had to do. Now, last night was frustrating because you don't have Zion Williams. You don't have some guys that are, you know, available to the Pelicans, you, you know, DeAndre Hunter didn't play well at all last night, and it was just kind of stuck in the mud. Maybe they were just kind of at the point of, let's just wrap this thing up and get back home. Because they'll play tomorrow night at home against a team that they just beat by 30-something points, and then you got San Antonio, and you're at Charlotte. So three very winnable games that are coming up here, two at home, one on the road. Of course, we know Charlotte has already beaten the Hawks, what, twice? I mean, so... You never know what's going to happen there, but Charlotte's not a very good team. 
So it, it could be three very winnable games. But now that we have this road trip under our belt and we're not going to play before the deadline and all that kind of stuff, what if the Hawks just stand pat? Look, the reality is that the Hawks aren't going to make a big splashy move. They're not going after KD. I mean, even, even if he is available or somebody like that, right? I don't even know that he's available, but, you know, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to, uh, you know, make a, a kind of a bold move like that and, you know, tack on another $50 million player to kind of gut their roster and have to add that salary on. So the Hawks were never going to be big movers and shakers. Maybe they would be more sellers than what they would be buyers because realistically, if you're buying at the trade deadline for the Atlanta Hawks, you're not looking for a starter. You know, you, you've got your starting five and that starting five is a pretty good group when healthy, when they play well together. I mean, all things considered, that's a good starting five. So you're not trying to find a starter to wedge into that mix or whatever like that. You're probably adding a bench piece or two. I still think that they will tweak what their bench is, you know, and and they're not going to move A.J. Griffin. I don't think they'll move Jalen Johnson. You know, like I said, they may move Bogey and they get some, you know, a bench piece or two back or whatever like that. But I don't think that the Hawks are going to be all that active. And when I hear all of these things, first off, when I hear the blue checkmark media, continue to tell me about that Collins is going to get moved. Collins is going to get moved. And I've watched him for the last couple of years, not be moved or whatever like that. I, I start to not buy into the idea that he's going to be a deadline acquisition for some team. And, and I, I do understand, you know, some teams think that they can fix a John Collins, right? But at what cost, you know, at, at what cost of a $75 million that's owed to him do do you try to fix John Collins or make him a reclamation project or whatever like that? Because John Collins should be better than what he is. And we've talked about on the show the four years of lower field goal percentage. You know, his field goal percentage has dropped for four years. Three-point percentage dropped for four years. Scoring has dropped, you know, average scoring points per game has dropped for four years. So maybe somebody will take him on. But if the Hawks don't do anything, do I think that they are a championship team? No, far from it. And and look, there's nothing about the Atlanta Hawks that shows you that they are ready to go on some kind of big run and be a championship caliber team. Can they hang with anybody in the NBA? Sure, they can. They, they can line their five up and hang with anybody in the NBA. When they play well and their offense is clicking and rolling, they can score with anybody in the NBA. They can put so much pressure on your defense they can hang with anybody in the NBA. But those nights are few and far between. But this will ultimately come down, I think, to not Landry Fields, not Nick Ressler. It's what Tony Ressler wants to do. What, what does he want to do? Does he want to immediately get into the luxury tax? Because they're $1.9 million away. And look, we keep harping on this. But this is what the reality of the Hawks are. Do you want to go in the luxury tax now and then pick it up in a second year? Because once you start to get in the second and third year, it's punitive. Like it really costs you a lot of money. And if you're not a championship caliber team, look, if you're goal, you know, Golden State and Boston, you can afford to do that for multiple years. You can't afford to do that when you're the Atlanta Hawks. It's just not a winning proposition. So this may ultimately be above Landry Fields, above Nick Ressler. This may be what Tony Ressler decides to do. And they most likely, well, I shouldn't say them. They most likely, I think that they are likely to not really do a lot at the trade deadline, maybe very minimal. We'll see if they trade Collins and Bogey and all this kind of stuff. But as we get closer and closer, I'm not buying any of it. I think Tony Ressler stands pat, he stays where he's at, and they see if they can go on a kind of run that, you know, maybe they can, you know, surprise some teams in the playoffs. All right, I want to talk about my friends over at FanDuel. Listen, we are excited about our 
new sports sports betting partner for Locked On FanDuel. It's the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, we've got a pretty cool offer for you. So you can download FanDuel.com today and bet on Super Bowl 57 with the no sweat first bet. And you can qualify to get as much as $3,000 in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So FanDuel lets you bet on everything from money lines to point spreads, who will score a touchdown. FanDuel is a safe, secure, super easy to use application. And best of all, you get your winnings instantly. So download FanDuel.com slash locked on today. FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D. O-N today and claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57 and you could potentially qualify for $3,000 in bonus bets if that first bet doesn't win. FanDuel.com slash locked on L-O-C-K-E-D. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. You know, I'm looking through the list of free agent quarterbacks and things like that and We've talked a little bit about this on the show, right? I'm of the mindset of like a Jacoby Brissett, and and I like that name specifically. Like Jacoby Brissett, a guy who doesn't break the bank but can compete with Desmond Ritter and push Desmond Ritter for a starting spot on the Falcons roster. But as I go through, and, and I've seen every quarterback linked in some way, whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo, Derek Carr, A.A. Ron, um, obviously Lamar Jackson, Tom Brady, Daniel Jones, Geno Smith. You know, there's some kind of fakakta scenario where the Falcons get, and I understand it because the Falcons need, you know, to upgrade a quarterback. We don't know what our quarterback situation is. Now, look, Would Lamar Jackson be an upgraded quarterback? Okay. Would A.A. Ron be an upgraded quarterback? Would Tom Brady be an upgraded quarterback compared to what we have currently in place right now? Yes. But everything is the cost. I've explained the whole Lamar Jackson thing. I don't think it's a wise idea. I don't think giving up all kinds of first-round draft picks. And I I don't think there's any scenario where it makes a lot of sense. Because now you're going to have to trade for him because they're going to put the exclusive franchise tag on Lamar and you're going to have to trade for him, okay? But when you look at some of these quarterbacks, like, for instance, let's just roll through some of the lists, okay? Tom Brady. Well, Tom Brady's retired now, okay? He ain't coming out of retirement to play for the Atlanta Falcons, okay? A.A. Ron, okay? He's a $50 million quarterback. Why would you get yourself back into that financial mess? Derek Carr, he's a $40 million quarterback. He's a $40 million quarterback who's played in one playoff game. So he has played in one more playoff game than me, right? He's played in one more playoff game than me. Jimmy G, Super Bowl quarterback, but he's going to have a marketplace. You know, there's going to be somebody that's going to make him a starter because he's had success at the NFL level. He doesn't wow you with his stats and things like that. And maybe because he's played for the San Francisco 49ers that he's been put in a good situation. But when he's been with the 49ers, he's succeeded. And some team will overpay him drastically because they think that, well, if he did it for the 49ers, he can do it for us. And then you trot out, you know, the Houston Texans roster and all of a sudden he's a bum, right? Daniel Jones, kind of a one-year wonder at this point. You know, he was a guy that played really well last year. No doubt about it. Played really well for the Giants, led them to the playoffs. But if you're the Giants, why would you get? Why would you allow him to walk away? Like, with all due respect, you're still searching for your quarterback. Why would you get rid of him? So the point is to all of this that I'm not wowed by any of these quarterbacks when you put it into a cost versus what I got to give up basis and all this, like, yes, are some of these quarterbacks better? Jimmy G, Derek Carr, A.A. Ron, Lamar, Daniel Jones, Geno Smith. 
yeah, they're better than what I have now. There's not, there's not really a dispute, but the cost of getting those guys, money, trade, capital, whatever, that I don't know. Look, again, it's the same theory I have with Lamar Jackson. We're not a quarterback away from being in the Super Bowl. We're not. If, if, if it's a matter of I have to roll the dice with Desmond Ritter versus giving up all of my draft capital, spending all of my free agent money on a, on a quarterback that isn't going to drastically make me any better. You know, again, like a Derek Carr. Is he an upgrade? Yes. He's a $40 million quarterback who doesn't win enough in the NFL. He doesn't lead his franchise to big heights. So why would I want that guy? Why, why, why would I not want to go with a guy that let's find out what he is. Let's find out what Desmond Ritter is before I start pulling the trigger on $40 million quarterbacks, quarterbacks that you know are going to cost you a lot of money or capital and draft picks or pieces or parts or whatever. You know, again, I want to see Desmond Ritter, but I want to see somebody compete with him. And that's why I keep going back to somebody like a, you know, a Jacoby Brissett. And look, I don't like Case Keenum or Chase Daniel. Like those guys are bums. Okay. Let, let's, let's, let, let's, let's cut through the fog and the nonsense. Those guys are bums. Okay. They're not going to do anything for your franchise. And Jacoby Brissett isn't probably, you know, barely a step above, but I like him more than even some of those guys. And I'm not saying that Jacoby Brissett is some kind of answer. If you got to play 17 games in the NFL, he's clearly not, but at least he's competent. At least he's not fall off a cliff bad. But when I, you start linking these quarterbacks that, yes, I understand the Falcons can upgrade a quarterback, right? What did we just talk about last Friday? You, you have to be great quarterback, offensive line, defensive line. Until you get those three things right, then you're not in the Super Bowl discussion. What, what are the Eagles and the Chiefs? Let's see. They're outstanding at quarterback, outstanding on their offensive line, outstanding on their defensive line. Why are the 49ers in the position that they're in? Because they're outstanding on their defensive line, they're outstanding on their offensive line, and if they had an outstanding quarterback, they'd be a multi-time Super Bowl champion. Why were the Buccaneers a couple of years ago, you know, a Super Bowl champion? Well, they were outstanding at quarterback, outstanding on their defensive line, outstanding on their offensive line. When you draft Tristan Wirfs and you're, you have a guy that is first team all NFL in his second year. That's how you get outstanding. But anyway, set all that aside. But it's it's a situation where just for capital and what I have to give up and things like that, I'm not rolling the dice on these big quarterbacks that don't win. I mean, outside of A.A. Ron, how many of these quarterbacks have won anything? Jimmy G has, and maybe... You know, again, rolling the dice on him is risky because, <laughs> with all due respect, the 49ers offensive and defensive line isn't the same as what we got. And by the way, you know, we still have trouble pass protecting in our offensive line. Outstanding run blocking uh, offensive line. We still have trouble pass protecting. So I, I don't want any of these quarterbacks. You know, give me a mid-level guy that doesn't cost me Ten million dollars, eight ten million dollars. Okay, give me a mid-level guy that can push Desmond Ritter, make him better, and, and at least have some competition at my starting quarterback spot. Yes, I understand all of those guys are probably better than what the situation is we have here now. But for what I got to give up, whether it's free agent dollars, whether it's trade capital whether it's roster capital, it just to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'd rather stand pat, develop my guy, and see what we can come up with from Desmond Ritter before I start pulling the trigger on all these, you know, probably overpriced guys that, uh, that can play quarterback. 
I want to talk about my friends over at Built Bar. Listen, everybody is trying to get in shape, right? We're early in the calendar year, trying to get, you know, new you, new me, everything like that, right? Trying to get ourselves healthier and improving the diet, okay? And you're looking for your snacks and things like that. And if you're looking for low sugar, low carb, low calorie, but high protein types of snacks, and I certainly am looking for some of those things, then try Built Bar. Head to Built.com today, okay? You can check out all of the great flavors that they have. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puffs, everything, all kinds of flavors are always coming out with a new flavor every month for you to try. Head to Built.com today. Check out all of the snacks that they have available to you, whether you want protein bars, the traditional ones, whether you want the protein-infused marshmallow puffs, okay? All of these are 130 calories and basically four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein to them. So if you're looking for that alternative snack that's low calorie, low sugar, low carb, but high protein, head to built.com today. Check out their wide menu, all the different flavors that they have. And if you don't want to head to built.com, you can go now to Walmart or Sam's Club. So you can go to Walmart. Head over to the uh, pharmacy section, grab you a box of built bars, or you can head to Sam's Club and grab you a box of built bars. So, if you want to go the brick and mortar route for picking your stuff up, head to built.com or go to Walmart or go to Sam's Club today and check out all the different flavors that they have and pick you up a box of built bars. It's your low calorie, low sugar, low carb, high protein snack. So LeBron James last night, he set the all-time leading points scoring record, right? I mean, he scored, he's now scored the most points in, in NBA history. It's kind of funny because I'm an old guy. I remember when Kareem Abdul-Jabbar set the all-time scoring mark and he beat out Wilt Chamberlain. Now, you know, Chamberlain was number two, Kareem was number one. Since then, Dirk Nowitzki, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Carl Malone, they've all passed Wilt Chamberlain on the all-time point scored list. But nobody's been over to overtake uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And LeBron James last night scored 38 points, and I think everybody thought that he was going to break the record last night. He was within striking distance, and he was going to do what they had to do to be able to score, to, to break the, the all-time points record. And Kareem was in attendance and, and all that good stuff. And it was at home and everything like that. Now, you know, I, I have a, a, an affinity for LeBron James. I'm originally from Canton, Ohio. He's from Akron, Ohio. So literally, you know, it's 20, 25 minutes apart from one of the cities, you know, cities apart and things like that. Obviously, I'm an old guy. LeBron's a little bit younger than, than I am but I have an affinity for LeBron. Now, you know, there's all these discussions. Oh, is LeBron the greatest and in, in this, that, and the other? You know, I don't know. I mean, those are for, you know, eggheads and noodle, you know, noodle necks and stuff like that to be able to try to figure out is Michael the best, is LeBron the best? Here's what I know, okay? And, and I'll make this really simple, okay? You can't have a starting five all time in the NBA that doesn't have LeBron James on it. Okay. You might be able to argue Kobe or even Kareem. And I, and I'll say this, I still think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the most underrated player in the NBA. And I know they just, he, you know, he's the all time scoring leader and all that kind of stuff, but I still don't think that Kareem gets as much love as what he does, you know, compared to the Hakeem Olajuwon's, the Shaquille O'Neal's and guys like that, you know, I, I still don't think that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has his place when, when we start talking about discussions of who are the best players in the history of the NBA. You know, a lot of people say Michael or LeBron or Kobe or guys like that, but Kareem should be in that discussion as well. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar belongs in that discussion. And, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, is without question the greatest collegiate basketball player ever. It's not even a discussion. It's not even close. The only guy who's within 25 miles of Kareem 
and when he was Lou Alcindor at UCLA, the only guy who's within even 25 miles is his team. It was his, you know, not his teammate, but the guy who came right after him in Bill Walton. That's the only guy who's even within 25 miles of discussion. Lou Alcindor at UCLA was far and away the greatest collegiate basketball player of all time. But when we talk about LeBron James, you know, goats and all this, you know, goats and whatever farm animals, you know, cows and pigs and goats and chickens and roosters and all this, you know, kind of stuff that we, you know, get our farm animals from, you know, to describe different types of players. The only thing I will tell you is that you can't have an all-time starting five that does not include LeBron James. Whether he's first, second, third, I don't really care. But you fill out your two guards, two forwards, center roster on your all-time greatest NBA team that you could ever assemble, LeBron James has to be somewhere on there. I don't care if you put him at guard. I don't care if you put him at forward. Hell, I don't care if you put him at center. LeBron James has to be on that list. And, and that's how great that he is. He's one of the most versatile players in the history of the NBA. He can do really anything. He's a physical freak. I mean, he's just a physical marvel to do the things that the size and the strength and the body and everything like that that he could do and, and just play at such a high level. You know, again, Michael had the six titles and the and the MVP. I, I, I get all of that. So, I, again, I'll leave that to all the eggheads, the nudniks, the, you know, the stat geeks and all that kind of stuff to sort out where LeBron ranks in the pantheon of all-time NBA players. But I can assure you, you know, that there are very few guys that you say that, you can't have an all-time NBA team. You, you know, when, when it comes to filling out your NBA all-time team, you can you can argue whether Larry Bird belongs on it. You can argue whether Dr. J belongs on it. Carl Malone, you know, even Kareem. You know, there's a lot of people that think that Kareem isn't the best center. But there are two guys that, without question, have to be on that list. You know, even Magic. I mean, some people don't think Magic's one of the great players of, of all time. I that blows my mind or whatever like that. He's the greatest point guard in the history of the NBA, but that's a side discussion. But there are two guys that for sure you can't leave off the all-time NBA starting five, and that's Michael Jordan and that's LeBron James. And, and that speaks to how great he is. And winning titles with three different franchises, and I understand it's a different era and free agency and all those kinds of things, but still, when, when you've been able to lead your team to an NBA title with three different franchises, it's a remarkable accomplishment. All the kudos in the world go to LeBron James. It's a magnificent record, and I'm glad he's the guy that broke it, having grown up 20, 25 minutes away from him. It's good to see a Northeast Ohio boy that really has succeeded and certainly been one of the greatest players in the history of the NBA. All right, we well, thank you so much for making Hitting Hard with John Chuck for your first listen every day. Make sure you make Locked On Sports today your second listen. Biggest stories of the day, instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available Spotify, YouTube, Apple, wherever you get all of your favorite podcasts from. Check us out there. Also, we ask you to head to YouTube.com for Locked On Sports Atlanta into your search browser. When you get there, hit that subscribe button, climb into 6,000 folks, be a part of our ever-growing community. Leave us a comment as well. We are free and available to download on all of your favorite podcast platforms. So you can get the audio version, Apple, Spotify, whatever your favorites are. Download us for free there today. Roku and Amazon Fire. If you like those platforms, you can check us out there as well. And then give me a follow on my personal Twitter page at JMCH316. Back with you tomorrow. This has been Hitting Hard with John Chuckery, Locked on Sports Atlanta.